capturing a trophy. It's what the Jesters want to do at the end of the season, and it's what they did this week. On this edition of the Jesters Court, we show you a critical match against Chattanooga that could impact that season-ending trophy, as well as a match at Shreveport that secured the Louisiana Cup. We will break down a play from each of those matches. Assistant coach Ryan Lazaro demonstrates how the Jesters get ready for training and matches. And Adam Torres is joking around. Break out the bubbly as we celebrate another edition of the Jesters Court. Next. This is the Buffalo Wild Wings in Metairie, home of the Jester's Court and a perfect place to eat some wings and watch Team USA continue their quest for a trophy at Copa America. And thanks for joining us for the latest episode of the Jester's Court. Paul Bourne along with head coach Kenny Farrell. We had disappointment Saturday night in the match against Chattanooga. We're going to get to that in a minute. But we're going to start with the good news, and that was Tuesday night when you brought home the Louisiana Cup. Yeah, no, it was important for us to win that trophy. We had gone in. It, we had gone in with a 2-0 lead. We knew we only needed to score one goal really to wrap it up. We did that and uh, very, you know, very confident going through the game. At the end, made some changes, you know, knowing that we, we basically would have been difficult to score four goals on us. And, um, and they came back in on, on, on that night. They actually got the result 2-1, but overall we won 3-2. Quite happy with it. It's a good inaugural uh, Louisiana Cup to bring a trophy back to Louisiana, and our fans are very happy. Oh, back to New Orleans, our fans are very happy, so we're happy with it. It was a great crowd in Shreveport, but it was hot, it was humid, but in the end, the Jesters take home the cup. The Jesters had a 2-0 aggregate lead as they headed to Shreveport to take on the Rafters and those wild seersucker jerseys. Rafters pushing early, third minute, Luis Petribo with the shot, but Liam Davies is equal to the task. 25th minute, another teasing shot, but Davies is able to punch it over the bar. Three minutes later, the Rafters have a chance, but as Davies challenges, Petribo loses possession. So the Jester is not pressing forward most of the half, but took advantage of some space on the narrow pitch in Shreveport. Oliver Crowley, a long blast. Adam Williams with the save, but Rolando Sanchez is there for the rebound. He scores, and it's 1-0 New Orleans at the half. 63rd man, Michael Gonzalo is called for a questionable foul in the box. So it's a PK for Rafters Abdullah Rayan, and he ties it at 1. 71st minute, Bonico Bazile off the crossing ball, and he can't put it away, we stay level. 89th minute, and Shreveport is on the attack. Liam Davies with one save and then another. But Will Awagu is able to put it in the net. The Rafters win the match, two to one. But it's the Jesters that are the ones raising the trophy with a 3-2 aggregate victory. I always look forward to score every single game, so. Uh... You know, it was great for me, for me and the team to score tonight. And uh, well, Ali had a, had a shot from way wide, so I was I was like, the keeper is gonna, is gonna, I don't know what he's gonna do, but I'm gonna score this. You know, so uh, I went for it and I scored in between his legs. That's what I like to left footed too. Um, first time this Louisiana Cup has ever been competed for. You guys get to take it home. Tell me how that. Feels. Uh, it feels it feels good, you know, uh, to have this and perform like uh, like we did today. We have a few uh, mistakes in sec second half, but uh, we look forward to uh, to play better than what we did today. It's just we well, were happy to keep the score down at first. I thought we came under a bit of pressure. Obviously, the game plan was to come and sit back and you know try and soak up the pressure, hit them on the counter attack because we had a two 0 lead from the first game. So I think we we kind of did pretty well, but in the end, I'm disappointed we lost the game. I know we've won the cup, but still, I'm disappointed that we've lost the game. Talk about winning the cup. First time this has ever been competed for, and you get to take a trophy. Oh, of course, it's good. That's good. Uh, in the day, you play to win trophies, and Kenny and the coaching staff and the lads are happy, so I'm happy as well. So, Coach, you win the first ever Louisiana Cup, but you don't win the match, and I know you were a little disappointed about that, especially the way the game ended. Yeah, uh, it was like we were probably three quarters way through the game, very much in control, 1-0 up, could have been 2-3. or three. Started to make some changes in the game, and uh, 
No, no. Uh, uh, you were there, Paul. You saw like a a, a a penalty call that was seemed, you know, like a home call. I yeah, we just say. saw it in the highlights. I have to say, it seemed like a home call, and it gets their crowd into it. And at the same time, I know the game is won. Even if we cough up another goal, I know the game is won. So I'm making substitutions, thinking about Chattanooga coming up on Saturday, and they score one basically in the last minute of the game. So, but um, it looked like uh, it looked. It looked like somebody was trying to make a game out of it. <laughs> well, they did make a game out of it. The home fans were happy up in Shreveport, but we're even happier because they get the Louisiana Cup due the New Orleans Jesters. Now, that led to Saturday night, a huge match at Pan American Stadium. Unfortunately, the Jesters don't get a result in this one. The Jesters looking to chip away at the five-point lead in the conference held by Chattanooga. Tenth minute, Tony Judice with the first good chance of the match, but he can't beat Gregory Hartley, and that would be the theme of the night. Liam Davies would match Hartley with some nice saves of his own, this nice tip away in the 21st minute. Then the diving save in the 30th. Just four minutes before the half, Nathan Heath with a beautiful free kick, but Hartley comes up with a spectacular save, and we are scoreless at the break. 48th minute, Chattanooga with the free kick. Sindre Wheelow is able to get his head on it for the go-ahead goal. But New Orleans had their chances to draw even late in the match. Nestor Peralta from 22 yards out, and that is ticketed for the lower corner, and somehow Hartley makes the save. Then in stoppage time, Aaron Burke with a great cross. Michael Gonzalo with a great header. And once again, it's Hartley with a great save as CFC wins 1-0. They were winning everything in the air. But I think, to be fair, second half, when Sean came on, we pushed Ryan up there, a bit of physical presence up there. We looked a bit more dangerous, and I thought we grew into the game. And like you saw at the end, we could have snatched it at the end. We could have got, we could have got an equaliser. Coach said it to me a few minutes ago. The disappointing part about the goal that the team gave up that was that it was off a set piece. Yeah, I mean, it was off a set piece. It was one of them. Like We knew, we knew coming into the game they were good at set pieces. But this, this one was just one of our men lost their men. It's one of them things that happens. It's pretty inexcusable at times, but it happens, so there's not much you can do about that. They're a very organised team at the back. Uh, big, strong boys, you know, they've got a good goalkeeper, and a good goalkeeper is probably worth four to six points in a, a season in this league. And the goalkeeper came up trumps from two or three times today. The, the free kick the first half, the header in the second half, and also one of Nesta strikes. So, I mean, if you've got a solid back line, a solid goalkeeper, you're always going to be tough to beat in this league. And, that's why they've not conceded many goals. Um, first home loss, obviously, this is a disappointing one, a team you were chasing, but you can't let it linger with Memphis coming in here on Thursday. No, I mean, that's the good thing about football, though, then I've got another opportunity to put it right, and we've, uh, we've got that on Thursday, so hopefully lads can recover, keep their heads up, because there's some positives to take out of the game, and we'll go again on Thursday, so hopefully it'll be another good performance. Kenny, CFC nearly doubles you up on shots, but you had great chances to at least get a draw out of this match. Yeah, I mean, we went through the first half and we, we, we kind of laid low and watched what they had. They've been one of the best teams in the country for the last three or four years, running in the national championship game the last two years in a row. And uh, I didn't, even though they had shots, they were from long distance. They weren't troubling us, you know, in the first half. So we go in at halftime and I take a look at you know what they got I'm trying to figure out what they have and we come out we press them in the second half but unfortunately you know right after half time which is very disappointing we we know better than this we give up a goal two minutes into the second half from a set piece poor marking maybe the keeper should have come maybe he should have cleared um, they go one nil up but we basically you know dominated for the rest of the game and if it wasn't for their goalkeeper having an outstanding game I think we may have tied it or maybe even won it yeah yeah, he was unbelievable. And we'll see how the Jesters bounce back on Thursday night against Memphis. And what we will see later in the show has now become a huge match in the Southeast Conference because the standings have really tightened up. But before we get to that, we're going to look back to last week once more in our coaches' breakdown. Plus, your assistant coach teaches us the best way to get warmed up, and we joke around with Adam Torres. The Jesters' court is coming right back. This edition of the Jester's Court is presented by Heineken. Open your world. By Rock and Bowl. Also by Vincent Guard Service. Experience has no substitute. And by Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. I wasn't born in America. And arriving here wasn't easy for me. They didn't even say my name right. I thought I'd never fit in. 
But over time, I gained their respect, and that respect turned into admiration. Admiration into love. And the world better be ready, because I'm an American now. My name is Soccer. Welcome back to the Jester's Court here on CST. It's time to go inside the game with the coaches breakdown presented by Heineken. And we go back to that match Tuesday night in Shreveport. And coach, this wasn't a goal, but uh, it was something that you try to influence your players to do on a fairly regular basis. Yeah, well, um, it, it's a great run by Niall on the left-hand side, but where it began from was a little bit of possession in midfield. As you know, it was a very tight field, the tightest we'll play on this season. And we win the ball in their half on one side of the field. We've drawn the players in. And if you notice that the ball comes back from Orlando to uh, Kia, who's already made eye contact with the left back who's on the blind side. And that eye contact, as the ball comes back to him here, he looks up. Uh, to see Niall who's starting to make a run they've made they've communicated with each other all the players are drawn in and that's how you get behind them on tight fields he's looked behind he's floated a ball in there might have been better a driven ball but he's floated it in so it takes a bounce and uh, plays a little one two at the forward he's in a very dangerous area and that's the kind of quality soccer that we want to see week in week out it was uh, very well played very well executed and great uh, I suppose great communication, non-verbal non communication between the players to create that. And it shows what a smart and uh, instinctive player Niall Smith is from the uh, backside defending. Now our second breakdown, we go to Chattanooga and it's the goal, which I know you were not happy about. It came off the set piece and you weren't happy about that Saturday night after we looked at the video after training on Monday. You were even more disappointed. Tell us why. Yeah, but well, there's a long ball comes in here, and there's a, there's, this should never have happened from the start. This is this is the game winner. This is what separates us and Chattanooga, and it's so poorly defended, in my opinion. It's like the ball comes in, it's long to the back post. First of all, right there, the defenders are in, never in a position to defend correctly. The two players from Chattanooga that come in, the wrong side of the ball, certainly the one that finished, is the wrong side of the ball. He ends up in the six-yard box, inside the six-yard box, and I, I, I just feel that the keeper needs to come off his line there, and, and, and he knows that as well. And uh, even if he gets contact with the player, the referee's probably going to call a free kick on him. So I really think, I really think that, um, that we should have come for it from the goalkeeper, and first of all, we should have marked up on the right side of the player. There is a question of offside. I don't know that it was offside. If the player's had authority was offside, they may have stopped. But that's not the point. That's the linesman's. That's the linesman's decision. But, you know, to make that the game breaker between New Orleans and Chattanooga is very tough to take. Now, hopefully we won't see any breakdowns like that against Memphis on Thursday night. Now, when the team takes the field Thursday night, they will get match ready with assistant coach Ryan Lazaro. He takes the team through warm-ups in training and in matches, and he's going to take you through some of the things he does in this week's training tip presented by Rock and Bowl and Ye Old College Inn. My name is Ryan Lazar. I'm the assistant coach with the New Orleans Jesters. This is my sixth year with the team, and what we want to do today is kind of describe what we do to, to mentally prepare the boys uh, in terms of warm-up and cool-down uh, before training and before matches. So the biggest thing we try to get across with the Jesters is when we prepare for matches, we want to warm up in a more dynamic way instead of static stretching. We find that when you warm up more static than dynamic, we lose a rate up to roughly 10% of peak force production. So what you see Fabian doing some static stretching, basically what that means is we're stretching standing still. It's really not preparing uh, Fabian for the match. And what we do see uh, with research that it will actually it won't increase the rate of injury, but it will decrease the rate of force production, which in soccer we know we want that explosiveness in every move we make. So what we have here, we have our two players, Zach and Orlando. They're going to demonstrate uh, just some, some simple dynamic uh, stretches. So the first one will be just working on the hamstrings, just going straight up. And notice what we're doing is, is like Fabian, what we don't want is to just stretch and stand still. So we're always moving in a continuous motion. So here we go, play. So just nice and easy, legs straight up. We're not moving uh, that much. We're just warming the body up, making sure they're ready to play. Next exercise, just open the gate here. So we're working on not only the, the, the groin, but we're working on the range of motion that we have in our legs as well. Here we go.
and light jog back. Well done, boys. And the last one we'll do is just, again, working on the hamstrings as we bring our leg back. Hold it for about a second or two, shake your legs out. Same thing, shake your legs out. So again, making sure we work on that aspect. We can come up with a thousand different dynamic stretches. So those were just a few. What I do want to show you is how we prepare our players in training and then pre-match of getting the boys ready to get the blood flowing, to get that, that rate of production going. So what we want to do, boys, just very, very uh, quickly now as we progress, we want to go as fast as we can through the cones and then a sprint out. So zigzag your way out and sprint out. Light jog back, go. And easy jog back, good. This time one foot in each one, go. This time, as you sprint forward, header, jockey back as we would defending an attacker, turn, pivot, and back pedal all the way out, go. There you go, jockey back, turn, back pedal all the way out, good, well done. Light jog back, two more. So now as we back pedal here, go to the last cone, sprint forward, we jump up for a header, as we land, turn, pivot, sprint out, go. And last one, we're gonna face each other. We're gonna use this white line just as a frame of reference. Two quick hops on that second hop. One, two, and then we turn and sprint out, go. Good. So basically that's our pregame warm up to, to get the boys ready for the match. But again, it's also very important that after the match, after training sessions, we do a similar uh, type thing that we call a cool down. And again, very uh, dynamic in terms of our movement and stretching. Again, what we, want to, what we want to avoid is static stretching, just standing still and, and stretching all the core muscles. So basically, that's how we warm up and cool down with the New Orleans Jesters. Thanks, Ryan. And when we come back to Buffalo Wild Wings, our audience here and at home will ask Coach Farrell about all things soccer. You've got to prove yourself to make it in America. It doesn't matter where you came from. I heard it, I'd never make it, but I proved them wrong. My name, you can call me soccer. It's our town and our team. The New Orleans Jesters are back at Pan American Stadium for the 2016 season. Jester soccer is great and an affordable entertainment. Single game tickets just $10 and $5 for kids ages six to 12. Kids under six get in free. Also family packs are available game days for just $25. To get your Jester's tickets, go to nolajesters.com or call 504-312-3979. As we welcome you back to Buffalo Wild Wings, we once again appreciate the team and all the great fans who are out here making this a great environment for the Jester's Court. And it's that time where we ask the coach with a new twist this week in addition to the questions from Twitter and from our audience. We're also going to take questions from Facebook and the Royal Court Roundtable. But our first question is from the audience. Uh, Coach, what do you think you need this year to defeat Memphis? All right, well, you had a draw in Memphis a few weeks ago, so good question. How do you get a, uh, a win this week, one you need? Well, I think, uh, I think we're a stronger squad right now than we were when we played them up there. Uh, we're not traveling for five days in this last <laughs> yeah. day, so I think we'll have fresher legs. So I think we go on the front foot, we take them on, we push on and press them, uh, player for player. I think we have a better squad, so I want to take them on, create chances to score goals. And uh, having looked at the way we played against Chattanooga and understanding where the squad is going, I think it's time to go play on the front foot, score some goals. Now, you're improved, but you also mentioned at training this week that Memphis has suddenly improved as they have climbed the standings. We're going to go to the Royal Court Roundtable for the next question. This is from Jeff Edward. Is it possible for us to host a playoff game, and how do we do it if so? Well, um, if, we won our, if we won our division, we would host the divisional playoffs, and I, I think that's really we're the favorites for that at Chattanooga right now. So, but if we, if we win our division, then there's a possibility we can. It depends on our ranking with the other four divisions that are in the Southern Conference. And, uh, and if, if, we're, if, we, if we continue to win games and do well, um, there's a possibility we could host one. Next question is from Twitter, and this is from Big John 300 Wants to know what's your rule on free kicks. Jordan Kenoshi seemed uh, mad at being pushed aside and not being able to take it the other night. So how do you designate who takes free kicks? Well, you know, it's decided on before the game, but at the end of the day, the captain on the field 
captain on the field will determine who, you know, the captain on the field is basically the coach on the field. He'll determine at the end of the day who's going to take it. And in the particular free kick I'm thinking of, I think we made the right choice and the keeper pulled off a great save from Nathan Heath. So it was the right choice at the time. But it's good that players get disappointed. They want to score goals. I like to see that in people. So uh, yeah, that's how it works out. Cool. And we've got another question from the audience. Uh, coach, how do you think Team USA has performed so far in Copa America? All right, Coach, a bit of a surprise the way the United States started to where they are right now, getting a chance to play against Ecuador on Thursday night. Yeah, well, I, I think the press was too hard on the first game. I think Jurgen Klinsmann was correct. There wasn't much difference in the teams on that night. They got the goals, they didn't. But I think I have to give them credit for staying focused on the game and that not getting caught up with the headlines and getting caught up with people getting annoyed at the performance because at the end of the day, the coach knew what he was doing, and obviously wins make it easy. But uh, they came back, they bounced back, they kept focused, they, they, they won the games they needed to win, and they put themselves in a great position. So I think um, right now, with probably confidence in the dressing room and the proper game plan, they've got a chance of going through a little bit further, and I hope that they do. But again, I give them more credit for coming back and not getting caught up in media and fans getting a little upset at that first game. Because if you're really looking at the game and you break it down, there wasn't much difference. The thing that's been encouraging for me, because I've been highly critical, their back line has, has performed pretty well in this tournament so far. And that's always, for me, been one of the big question marks for Team USA. Back to the Royal Court Roundtable for another question. This from Colin Ash, who wants to know what you think of Ireland's first match in Euros on Monday against Sweden. I know you're happy. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy and sad at the same time. I'm disappointed that we, we actually went up a goal, which is where you want to be. And, and it was an unfortunate own goal, and I think it could have been prevented. But uh, So we tied 1-1. But if, when you look at it overall, we're in a good position uh, to try and get into the, to the second round of the, uh, into the to knockout stage of that tournament. Absolutely. Time for one final question from the audience. Coach, we're already halfway through the season. Could you just reflect on what the team has already done this season and what us as Jester fans have to look forward to the rest of the season? Yeah, it's, it's hard to imagine we're already in week seven of this show and uh, we're a lot of the seasons in the rearview mirror already but a lot of highlights so what, what yeah I mean we've won four home games I think we've lost one uh, home game the road trip was tough um, I felt games we could have won um, I don't think the players it, it was a, it's, it's a new team this year as everyone knows so they were finding each other a little bit so you know looking at and, and the players know this as well as I do they're a very good squad of players. And I think we're going to get stronger as the season goes on. As we go into the second half of the season and the next five games coming up, uh, we'll see more cohesion. Uh, there's lots of talent. We just need to become a little bit more cohesive. We basically understand our game plan uh, when we go into games, how we defend, how we attack, you know, recovery. Every, everything involved in the game we're getting better and better at. And as I say, they're so new that it's very, very encouraging. And I think the second half of the season is going to be very good for us. All right, so great round of questions once again both from Twitter, from the Royal Court, and from here on our audience. Now, when we come back to the Jester's Court, we will joke around with Adam Torres, and we get you set for the week ahead. You've got to prove yourself to make it in America. It doesn't matter where you came from. I heard it, I'd never make it, but I proved them wrong. My name, you can call me soccer. As we come back, we see things are tightening up in the Southeast Conference between spots two and five, making the match with Memphis at home critical because now they've pulled even with you and yeah. they are in second place in the Southeast Conference. Yeah, well, we're both tied for second. They have two goals scored more than we have. Uh, goal difference is two better than ours. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a great game. It's like every game now, you know, is, is like the final. You know, every time you play a game, everybody's in the hunt. Um, so everybody's looking to separate themselves from the team around them. And uh, that's how big this game is. And that's how tough this division is. I mean, you can look at other divisions, the teams running away with it, uh, and a separation between top and bottom. It doesn't happen in this league. It doesn't happen. And look, even Chattanooga, uh, even though they've, you know, they're, they're unbeaten this season, they got out of there lucky uh, on Saturday night. So it's not like they're better than everybody. You know, they're running away with it. Right. It's right. These are tough games. So every, everything's a tough game. We knew that going in. And that's why we love playing in this division. Yeah, you said it even in the beginning of the year that this was going to be a, a tough division. And so far, that has proven true. 
Now, one guy who would love to be chipping in on the playoff push is Adam Torres, but he had knee surgery, hasn't been able to recover and get back on the pitch, and you've shut him down for the season, but that doesn't prevent him from joking around. Hi, my name is Adam Torres. I'm a center midfielder and forward for the New Orleans Jesters, and this is my sixth season. My most embarrassing moment on the soccer field is when I forgot to put on my shin guards on the second half, and I received the second yellow getting a red card. My soccer idol was Zinedine Zidane from France, played for the French national team. His touch was impeccable, he had a great attitude, and he was a fantastic finisher. If I wasn't a soccer player, I'd be a stockbroker because I'm currently studying to be a stockbroker and I will be one day. My favorite TV show is Friends because it always gives you a great laugh. My favorite movie is Pulp Fiction because of its irony. What does Marcellus Wallace look like? What? What country are you from? What? what? What ain't no country I ever heard of. They speak English and what? What? My favorite celebrity is Penelope Cruz because she's just jaw dropping. My favorite uh, artist is Nikos Xiluris and he's a Islander from Greece and he's my favorite because I love his sweet music because I'm Greek. Kios Island, because it's where I'm from, my family's there, beautiful beaches, beautiful people, and fantastic food. My favorite food is shrimp creole with rice, because it's a New Orleans favorite. A talent I have that my teammates may or may not know about, some do, some don't, is cooking. I love to cook, it's relaxing, and gets my mind off of things. And you can really express yourself while you're cooking. Coach, Adam is a guy you had hoped would be back in the lineup. It just hasn't worked out with his knee. I, I know you're disappointed for him as much as anything. Yeah, you know, Originally, we thought we were back for the beginning of the season, and then maybe two weeks into the season, he could start getting his fitness back, and then we could you know, use him as the season goes along, get him to fitness levels, and certainly heading towards, hopefully, playoffs, that he'd be part of the squad. But it's been very slow uh, recovery. Um, so basically I've asked him to join the coaching staff for the rest of the season. We know Adam will be rooting on the team as your fans will as Memphis comes to town on Thursday night as we look at the week ahead presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Coach, you had a scoreless draw with Memphis on the road. We mentioned it, that a moment ago. Now a huge showdown with them here Thursday night. You really need three points. Yeah, I mean, everybody needs the three points. <laughs> everybody needs it. But you're right, it's, it's a big game, but it's a home game. It's a home game and it's a very winnable game. But not just this game, hopefully we win this one, but every game going forward is going to be this big. And we'll have highlights of that match next week right here on the Jester's Court. And we're hoping to have a special surprise, but we're not going to mention what it is because we don't want to jinx it just yet. You can watch the show at these times next week, three airings on CST. It will also be available on my YouTube channel starting on Thursday. But that's all the time we have for this edition of the Jester's Court. For Coach Kenny Farrell, Paul Boran saying so long from Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs>